All right, well, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. All right, so, uh, you know, uh, I think all of us see those non-dilatable, heavily calcified iliacs all the time. The question, how do we approach them? You know, I don't know if I can move forward here. It's not moving forward. Maybe I can use this one here. Here you go. Uh, these are my disclosures. All right, we know that iliac interventions are about 15 to 30 percent of endovascular interventions. And we see calcified iliac arteries uh, in almost 20 to 60 percent of patients, depending on the study that you look at. There are certainly a lot of potential issues, you know, with severe calcification, including, uh, you know, a challenge to cross the lesion, dilate the lesion, uh, of course, a higher risk of complications, uh, and the acute and long-term outcomes may be impacted by the severe calcium. So this is an example of a, a small study of about 13 patients with 14 heavily calcified iliac arteries that underwent uh, primary stenting. And you see the initial luminal stenosis was 77.9%. Post-treatment was only 47.9%. You know, nothing really to be very proud of. Uh, and you look at the hemodynamic success, you know, was only in 60% of patients. The clinical success was 78%, and all vessels, however, remain patent. So really the problem is the continued hemodynamic significance uh, of the residual narrowing that you leave behind in those uh, iliac arteries. Patency, whether it's affected or not, it's very unclear at this point, but there is clearly uh, the reason behind the, uh, the hemodynamic uh, uh, lack of significant improvement is the incomplete expansion of the stents. So covered stents in that regard, if you look at uh, the uh, study using the ICAST uh, atrium uh, stent. Uh, in uh, patients who have about 60% severe disease, mostly common iliac arteries, uh, total occlusion about 17% of those patients, uh, you can see that the 30-day death was 0%, TLR was 2.9%, and restenosis was only 4.9%. So the primary patency was 95%. 0.1% in these patients with almost 60% had severe calcium. The TLR rate was 2.9%. Uh, so really, it's maybe not about long-term patency more than it is about the acute hemodynamic uh, improvement. This is another example from the BARD live stream, you know, where you see in moderate to severe calcium, about 60% of all those lesions, uh, you know, the, um, uh, again, mostly common iliacs. Uh, and you can see exactly the same thing. The primary patency was 92.8%, TLR was 4.3%. Uh, overall, really not very bad uh, data using those covered stents. So when we see patients with severe calcified iliac arteries, we tend to use a lot the pave and crack technique. You know, we think this is a safe technique uh, to avoid a lot of perforations. So the pave and crack technique was initially described by the Malmo group in Sweden. Uh, in iliac arteries, you know, and recently the German group has described it in the calcified FEMPOP arteries. If you look, uh, the whole concept is to line the arteries with a covered stent, uh, make sure you have full coverage, and the Malmo group would recommend covering the internal iliac artery, uh, because that's really where the site of most of the rupture would, would occur. Uh, and then they proceed with very aggressive uh, balloon dilatation. In this case, you will probably see less perforation. Uh, the same thing was applied in the FEMPOP, uh, and again, um, that was done prior to deployment of supera stents. You know, you may actually get the covered stent, you may dilate it to high pressure, you may still get quite a bit of recoil, uh, but then, you know, you've done all the high pressure you can within a safe way, then you can end up stabilizing the vessel with a supera stent afterwards. Uh, again, this was used in the iliac arteries prior to aortoiliac stent graft deployment. This is an example, for instance, you know, where severe calcified iliac arteries, 100% uh, occlusion of the right common iliac, you know, following treatment, covered stent, and then endografts placed afterwards. We've seen what happens with the previous cases. As long as you keep that covered stent not to migrate upwards, I think you'd be good. So vessel prepping. Vessel prepping is very important. You know, we think this uh, has a lot of role to play in iliac arteries. Uh, so what are the strategy for vessel prepping? Uh, you know, we think it's important because it allows better stent expansion, whether it's a bare metal stent, covered stent, and even when you're using the pave and crack technique, you don't guarantee all the time you're gonna get that full stent expansion, even with very high pressures. Also, you get better hemodynamics and you may get better clinical outcome. So, atherectomy, you know, which we don't like to use in the iliac arteries, it has been used, you know, with certain devices, but it does have some limitation. You know, safety data is limited, perforation, of course, can be catastrophic. 
Uh, bulky lesions will carry a high risk of embolization, uh, and it depends on how effective it is. It has to do with how big the vessel size that you're treating. It's clearly an off-label application in the U.S., and by the way, if you do it, you may not get reimbursed, not for the uh, iliac treatment. You will not get reimbursed for the entire procedure. It happened to us many times. So. There, are, there is some data on orbit lathorectomy. It's a retrospective analysis, 85 iliac artery lesion in 79 patients. You know, post-orbit lathorectomy, amazingly, the mean stenosis was 39%. Following adjunctive angioplasty in the study was 11%, and stents were only placed in 44% of the cases. Procedural success was 96%. As you can see, the complication rate was relatively low in this uh, patient population. This is another uh, analysis that came from the confirmed registry on 68 lesions and compared to femoropopliteal severe calcified disease and found out that really it's pretty safe, you know, compared to the FEMPOP uh, treatment. In fact, the complication rate was 2.9% uh, treating the iliacs versus 11% treating the FEMPOPs. No slow flow, no spasm, no embolism, uh, no thrombus formation or flow limiting dissection. There was one reported perforation and one reported vessel closure in this sub-analysis. So this is an example, you know, of a totally occluded right common iliac, heavily calcified you can see by IVIS uh, almost a, a ring of severe calcium with nothing uh, can be visualized behind that. And post-orbit lathorectomy, you can see a nice lumen, uh, you know, uh, and um, essentially you can start seeing some of the tissue behind uh, that ring of calcium. How about shockwave? Shockwave uh, is something that we have recently started to use to vessel prep the severe calcified disease. It's effective, you know, it uh, can treat superficial and deep calcium. Uh, it's approved for iliac applications, you know, it's for anywhere there's calcium actually. And the limitation, however, is the balloon size to vessel size ratio. Large uh, iliacs, so you, this may not be adequate, you may not get good coverage. Uh, more data is needed, of course, to demonstrate the effectiveness in these severe bulky lesions. Now, we reported on six patients, actually seven patients in our lab, that we used, uh, you know, um, lithoplasty for that purpose. And these uh, patients, you know, had uh, total occlusion was in about 57 percent of them, uh, severe calcium in 85 percent, uh, and then uh, when you start looking at uh, the, the number of pulses delivered, it wasn't really terribly high, it was 72 uh, pulse or so on average, uh, but the procedural success was 100 percent. There was only three dissection. Eventually, they were all stented. That was the uh, initial intention. But I think more important than this is when you look at the post-deployment stent diameter and you compare it to the expected stent diameter, uh, you know, based on the label, there was really no statistical difference, which indicate that these stents were fully expanded as you would have expected. And this was really a reassuring sign for us. This is an example of one of those patients, you know, with excellent results. Uh, we have uh, been using also, of course, lithoplasty for transfemoral access in those severe iliac disease. Bottom line, this is an, uh, another example of uh, external iliac and common femoral, uh, you know, with excellent uh, hemodynamic improvement. Uh, so I would conclude that severe calcified iliac arteries uh, will affect your stent expansion, hem hemodynamics. Uh, patency is a big question mark. The evidence of vessel prep uh, is lacking, but orbit lathorectomy and shockwave appear to be feasible, and covered stent are very important. Uh, that would allow you that pave and crack uh, technique, which can uh, be a very reasonable option in treating those severe calcified iliac artery. Thank you.